we're seeing that's unique for us is when our platform goes to market, 70, 80% of the customers like to program themselves. That researcher and that person from Jaguar Land Rover, they have teams that program. But a lot of customers of ours want a turnkey solution. They don't want a program. So we have these partners in this hall of people integrating systems, and that's what we talk about in our partners. We have a 1,000 partners worldwide, and these are companies that range from five PhDs all the way to you know, a 1,000 man company who can build a pretty sophisticated system. And many of them are, are here showing their systems and their areas of expertise. So we've chosen um, a particular way to go to market. We actually don't directly integrate systems. We work with these experts. And these experts have, just like he and I have 20 plus years in test and measurement and embedded, they have 20, 30, 40 years in big physics, in automotive, in manufacturing test. Yeah, communications, military, aerospace, so semiconductor. So they're, they're really very knowledgeable in our tools and they're here. And then I talked about the investment. We, we will just out invest uh, in the software centric view. Um, we spend 16% on R&D. One of our biggest investment is LabVIEW. And you can see every one of these LabVIEW releases, you're talking back in the old days, you know, on the order of 20, 30, 40, 50, 100 developers, you can imagine now we spend 16% on R&D, $200 million, mm -hmm. you can reverse the math and figure out, wow, they probably have more than 2,000 R&D engineers, and it's a very software-centric view of the world. So we are putting a huge amount of investment in LabVIEW, and Jonah, Paul, and Jadev showed some future technologies of LabVIEW that are coming. So that investment is being uh, increased. So LabVIEW, you know, we showed this channel wire. This is more for the sophisticated users. Uh, there's a, two sort of brains or two sorts of people in that room this morning. There are people who have been working with us for 10 and 15 and 20 years. I just met a professor. He's been working with LabVIEW 7 since 99. Then there's a lot of people. This is their, his colleague didn't know about national instruments. So there's always a, a gamut. This product and this capability You'll hear claps when we talk about it, this channel wire. So LabVIEW um, is graphical blocks that you put together, sounds simple. It's a little more sophisticated than that. So we implemented a new wire. So LabVIEW doesn't have wires in it too often. There's five or six basic wire types, you know, Boolean, logic, analog data, so a floating point number. This channel wire is pretty slick because when professional programmers use LabVIEW to solve pretty complicated uh, programs, they actually have to send data from one loop into another. And you can send the wire, but there's certain timing parameters, there's certain cues that are set up, and instead of having to program that and schedule it, LabVIEW does it behind the scene. So it's probably man years of effort with one simple wire, and I think it shows it here on the left versus the right. So the power LabVIEW programmers just basically saved days and uh, several days in a week of programming by using this wire. It sounds simple because, you know, you would think, oh, well, I don't program LabVIEW, I see wires. What's the difference between this wire and this wire? Well, there's a pretty big difference. And if you're a LabVIEW expert, you would know. And internally, we call this Jeff's wire. Jeff is the founder of LabVIEW, and he's a big fan of coming to NI Days India. So he thought of this innovation several years back and really wanted to uh, actuate it and it's pretty popular. So when you come to these forums, if you had been in the keynote, you'll see a few guys clap, and you go, why was that guy clapping? Because he knows, he or she knows, ooh, this saves me a lot of time and effort. And then we partnered, um, I think you guys, I think you guys know, um, I think we mentioned briefly uh, FlowServe. So this is high performance computing. So that is a blade server, uh, high end server. It has up to 64 cores, <coughs> rack mountable. And it has PXI slots that HPE decided to put in. So it's called an Edgeline server. And what they did, we worked jointly with FlowServe. They have um, uh, power generation, so asset monitoring. And they're generating, these turbines are moving and generating large amounts of data. 
And that edge-line server is an aggregator of the data. And because LabVIEW is controlling and moving that data, it can transparently use 64 cores. If you're doing that in C, you would have to program all the cores yourself and all the threading. So it makes utilizing a 64 core machine very easy. So when HPE wanted to take advantage of the Internet of Things, this is predictive maintenance in the Internet of Things, they turned to National Instruments. They said, hey, could we build PXI slots so we could put FlexRio into our slots and then run LabVIEW on it? And we said yes. And we said, well, what would you use the PXI for? Oh, well, we would run FlexRio to run the simulations in the lab of this energy experiment. And then when we deploy it, we could take the real data from the assets. And this could probably save the end customer, FlowServe, you know, $10 million in operational efficiency. So it's a pretty slick ap application. A $60 billion company, HP, HPE, wanting to work with National Instruments because of this platform-based approach. Uh, we talked about the advances in communications. You saw a demo today. There is not a 5G lab in the world that you can find that isn't using LabVIEW and our 5G solution. It's state-of-the-art. Uh, I visited seven of them myself, and there's probably 12 going on, leading researchers in the world. And it's pretty slick. And when 5G gets into deployment over the next several years, you, you guys probably remember pre-4G. 4G was just an idea. Well, 5G is coming. It's being prototyped. And when you uh, prototype 5G, you have to do this thing called massive uh, multiple input, multiple output system. So multiple antennas and multiple receivers where you can uh, broadcast and receive different signals that are bouncing off buildings uh, and very high speed data. You know, the goal is to get extremely fast, large amounts of data through the air. So you need to simulate these environments and try out these algorithms. And the algorithms are, of course, in India and the, the state of the art places in the world. So we, um, we talked a little bit about this massive MIMO platform. Uh, we worked with Bristol. I happened to go to this lab in 2009 because I was the managing director of the UK when they didn't use any LabVIEW. And now all their PhDs use LabVIEW. Uh, five of the seven experiments use LabVIEW. And this one is the world record for sending data over the air. And if you can send a lot of data over in the air, the real benefit is sending different spectrum through it, packing different information in different frequencies. So it's called spectral efficiency. And being able to do that in a reproducible way is a very sophisticated communications problem. So you have to have a good algorithm, you have to be able to model it, and then you have to actually be able to send the data and receive it over the air. So I worked with uh, Professor Beach, and then the head of the department is this guy, Dr. Nix. So. Um, I happened to go visit him in June, coincidentally. So I saw the bookends of, didn't use anything. Now they sort of standardize on using it for all their uh, PhD research. It's also cool because it's open. They can reuse algorithms they've already developed. Because they might have an algorithm already developed from three, four years ago they like. Maybe it's in MATLAB. They can bring it in. And LabVIEW is a very good system design tool. Uh, a lot of the people, implement the algorithm directly in LabVIEW, but it's also open. So I talked about that all test and measurement systems and embedded system, timing is a fundamental concept. Uh, if you're measuring temperature and pressure and flow, not so, not so important whether it's changing once a second, once every 10 seconds. But on, on some systems, timing is very, very important. And we've always put time as a first class citizen in the LabVIEW. So it can scale from really simple things to super complicated ones. And the state of the art complex one we always show is the Large Hadron Collider. So a 26 kilometer ring, the Indus one was, uh, how big was, how, how big was uh, our RCAT's ring? Smaller, but still pretty big. And um, you're talking controlling timing signals on a beam uh, on the order of a microsecond between here and 26, you know, 13 kilometers on the other side. And if the beam isn't controlled properly, bad things happen. It melts copper. 500 kilograms of copper. So you need to have a very tightly controlled beam. You're actually controlling magnets that are controlling the, uh, you're controlling power supplies that are controlling the magnets and they're all phase aligned. 
So we, we spent a lot of time putting in timing and synchronization. The latest uh, enhancement is this time sensitive network. And um, it allows you to introduce timing to distributed systems. So it's really easy in a rack in a lab, like that professor, sh uh, like the researcher showed. He's in a controlled environment in a lab. As soon as you go out into the, into the uh, real world, you might have a distributed problem. Now you have to use standard, uh, ideally, you can see the blue cable, that's standard ethernet. So there's a new protocol, time sensitive network. We're working with companies like Cisco, um, Bosch, uh, I think Bosch, write down Cisco, don't write down Bosch, I'll get you the other names. So various really big suppliers to really empower distributed timing and control over standard cable, ethernet into Compact Rio. The smart grid is the user, so Oak Ridge is using this. So they used our tools to simulate the grid in the lab. That was like three years ago. They actually used Flex Rio and LabVIEW. And now they're deploying it. So they built a deployed system. And I mentioned, and you know, India has a lot of knowledge on the grid. You know, you guys have your massive demand of power and stabilizing power. And you know, the, the power in the grid is like a wave. It's like an ocean. It's like a swimming pool of a, a constant wave. And when you add energy into the, into the pool, you have to add in the energy at the same phase as the, as the wave that's in the pool. If you add it in slightly at a different phase, you end up impeding the wave itself. So you can imagine you know, ocean waves. If you hit it perfectly and add in energy, you get a bigger wave. So these distributed nodes are all over the place. You have wind farms, solar, all injecting energy all synchronized and time sensitive network is a way to do that. So these Oak Ridge guys uh, are doing that. And then if you go to the other extreme, the power of a platform, it's pretty complicated, right? You can do time sensitive network, you can do MIMO communications, you can also do hardware in the loop, same platform, uh, different modular hardware. So. Um, Hardware in the loop is an ability to simulate uh, hardware. So I'll give you an example. Your car has a brain in it called an engine control unit. One way to test out the engine control unit, you put it in the car, you drive the car around, and you have it react to real world conditions. Well, in other ways, you take the brain out, you bring it to the lab, and you simulate the entire world around it so it thinks it's in the outside world. And you give it different parameters. You say, hey, here's the oxygen, here's the uh, the accelerator pedal, here's the speed, here's the RPM, here's the wheel speed, here's the wheel pressure, and you test out that brain, you can run through many, many different algorithms. So that simulation, that emulation is called hardware in the loop. So one of the problems with hardware in the loop, uh, well, one of the good things, it's used in automotive and aerospace. And um, we already make tools for it, so we make LabVIEW and Veristand. One of the companies that used it is Saab. So what happens in hardware in the loop, um, two things. You have to spend a lot of time building custom loads and custom uh, uh, conditioning to your external signals. That takes a lot of time. So what we did is we made an open modular form factor to build signal conditioning. It's called SLSC, and it's right there. So we make some modules, and third parties make modules, and they we're testing this fighter. It has 60 brains in it that ha all have to be tested. And then instead of spending time testing the brain, they're spending time building the hardware, custom hardware. So now they can build it in SLSC, switch load signal conditioning, and then really focus on their engineering problem, getting a more reliable fighter, testing out the, the brains on that fighter, which is a very sophisticated problem. I'm going to go a little bit faster. Um, we've had a significant investment in previous. How many have come to a previous NI days? NI days? One, two, three. So we had a big announcement on our initiative in semiconductor. We've been doing a lot of tools, PXI and LabVIEW and TestDAN, for characterization of ICs for the last several years. And about two years ago, we announced the semiconductor test system, a higher level starting point with LabVIEW and TestDan to test out ICs. Well, one of the big feedback, that product was very, very successful. So many of the 
semiconductor companies in the world are using it, the semiconductor test system. And one of the feedbacks they had was, hey, we really need a digital pattern generator. So we listened to them and we made this product for them. And it's actually already deployed in, I think about six to eight of, this, of the different customers. And you guys know when semiconductor customers produce semiconductors, they produce them in pretty big volume. So these are very high volume applications for a production test. So very, very successful for semiconductor test and characterization. So I know it's sort of overwhelming because you're like, hey, he spoke about automotive, he spoke about aerospace, now he's talking about semiconductor, then, then he spoke about big physics and particle accelerators, but that is the benefit. When uh, I got my phone here, I think when they made this thing, they never realized it would be a map, a phone, a level, you could buy a level app. Uh, I use it for my Diwali candle because we didn't have matches in the house once. Nobody's laughing except me, but I did. I got the candle app for Diwali. Uh, then we found candles and uh, I had the candles, but I didn't have uh, matches because we were living in Japan. Not so many places for matches. So just the diversity of applications was never thought of probably in Steve Jobs' head when he came out with it. And that's the same thing that I would say Jeff Kay and Dr. T realized is the concept of the platform, it just gets incrementally better each year and can consume more and more. But it could not do these things when it first released with LabVIEW 1 and 2 and 3 when he and I were supporting customers, right? Um, and then we culminated with this vector signal transceiver, really the ability to go very high end on measurements in RF. You can see the comments uh, really with the available chips in the market. So we talked about leveraging IP from Xilinx, Intel, uh, a lot of the RF stuff driven by cell phones, really making it available to all scientists and engineers. We introduced that product, sorry. We introduced that product. Hello. We introduced that product a few years back. It's the most successful PXI product we've ever made. Um, yeah, so by far, the most successful product we've ever made, and we just sort of beat it. We 5X the bandwidth, we increased the size of the FPGA, uh, we changed the number of slots, and why is that important? You're like, well, so what's the big deal of less slots? Well, if you remember, when you want to do that massive, uh, massive input, massive output, you need multiple cards to fit in a chassis, so you can do an 8x8 MIMO. Uh, in a small chassis. And we were able to do this uh, offering world-class measurement. This minus 50 dB is a world-class measurement. So if you're in the communication space, you usually ask us, great, j Rob, show me how I can get minus 50 dB for error vector magnitude. Now the burden is on us and we're pretty good at delivering on the burden. But that is a game changer of the spec. So. The, the product is best in class in many direction, in dimensions, but it's flexible. You can change the IP. You don't have to go back to the vendor for this closed box. And then we shipped some higher level frameworks for it. Uh, we talked about one really cool place that we use this is in this automotive radar. So, and it's a cool application because it's RF, automotive radar sensor, but it's also, oh, let me go back, sorry. It also does hardware in the loop because when you're a car and you're generating RF signals, you need to respond to the thing that you're interacting with. If it's a post or a human being. If it's a post, you're usually parking and you have time to react. If it's a person walking out, the time it takes to close the loop and react is extremely fast. So what's really good for us, the same platform that's used for generating the RF can also do hardware in the loop. So it's an integrated platform to do it. And the, the companies that do hardware in the loop, they don't know how to do RF. And the companies that do RF don't know how to do hardware in the loop. So we're a little bit unique in that the platform can do both. And then uh, we talked about the future investment. So we know that there's a pretty big investment in making LabVIEW easier to use. So we showed a technology preview. I think um, the presenter said, if you're on service contract for the software, then you get free access to this uh, tool. 
And there's a lot of data analytics we've put in, in a different variant. These are three different variants. And there's also a capability on web and cloud. So tools that make it easy for the existing version of LabVIEW to communicate to the web and cloud and communicate to HTML. And it sort of leads us back to the closure of this one sort of platform-based approach where different customers in really different areas can pick the right modular I.O. part. And I guess for us, the other big thing that is unique about us, you know, we make these, they're open and you can build modules, but we also work with other instruments. We work with other third-party instruments. So we really believe the customer should be able to choose uh, whether there are pieces or another set of pieces. And hopefully that gives you a little bit of idea uh, of some of the new capability. And a lot of those, uh, if not all, are, you know, sometime between July 1st and the end of this year, they're all releasing uh, or released and different variants of it in volume. So we had a pretty significant uh, set of launches. And you can imagine this is what you can do if you have about $200 million going into R&D.